Good afternoon, I'm Andy Johnson. Welcome to Advertising Week Europe. Now, you won't believe this to look at me, I'm sure, but I'm old enough to have started working way back when in the print industry, and that has changed beyond all measure, as we all know, particularly with digital uh, and everything that's coming on at the moment. And the guy I want to talk to now, I'm very glad he's here, is uh, John O'Donnell from the Evening Standard Group, the commercial director. Print has changed beyond all measure, hasn't it? I mean, for instance, within your own group, of course, we no longer have the yep. independent yep. as a printed entity. How big a uh, decision was that to make? And presumably, you still think it was the right one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, I mean, people talk about us making really big, brave, bold decisions. They said exactly the same thing when the Evening Standard went free. And they've said the same when we have uh, gone digital only on the, on the independent. And I think, you know, the truth is, it's not about making brave, bold decisions. It's about making the right ones. And for us, going free was absolutely the right decision for the Standard. And going digital is the right decision for the Indy. I think, you know, when you've got a situation on the independent where about... 40,000 people a day are buying copies of the paper, and then you've got about 300 million people a month sort of reading the content online, it kind of gives you an, an indication of how they want to consume the content. So for us, we don't really think in terms of, of, of print or, or of any kind of distribution platform, it's just creating content in, in ways and formats that people want to consume, basically. So yeah, we're very, very confident that, uh, you know, the business in rude health, I think the standard is, you know, it is not a paid-for product. I think you know we've come to realise that paid-for is is challenged, um, and the standard is a free product. It's, it's in growth. The audiences are in growth. The business itself is in growth. You know, and the independent as well is the fastest-growing quality news website. At the point of it going free, uh, sorry, going digital, uh, it actually became the the biggest uh, pure-play news site in the UK. So I think there's a lot of reasons for us to be quite cheerful about our particular um, uh, stance in, in in the news industry. Do you think print? per se has a future though and if it does how long could that future be well I think you've got to look at a lot of different businesses and I think you know print will always have a future for some people I think you know it's up to people to adapt and change their models accordingly I think you know some newspapers will um, undoubtedly be considerably more challenged than others um, I think for us you know we made the decision that was right for ourselves with both of our titles I think you know there will always be a market for people who want printed newspapers I think in the same way you know that one of the biggest um, growth areas in entertainment now is vinyl you know whether or not not that is the right for the Daily Mail or the Financial Times or whatever is, is up to them. I think for us, we still believe that print has a really strong role to play for the for the commuter in London, um, and so we'll, as long as they want to continue consuming it that way, we'll still give out you know 900,000 copies every single night. Of course, we're, we're hearing more and more about multi-platforms and yep. people accessing content in all sorts of different ways yep. now. It's the way forward, isn't it? How do you yep. see that panning out, say, over the next 12 months? Um, well, for us, I mean, you know, to take the, I mean, we've almost got two very separate businesses now. So, and, you know, we have the Evening Standard, which, you know, we see really as, as being more of an interface for London than anything else. So, you know, we have through that, you've got, I suppose, elements of television with London Live. You've got um, the digital side of it through various apps and, and, and websites. You've either got the print elements and, of course, we'll partner with other third parties. So, you know, we look at ourselves very much as being that hub that people can go through who want to reach a, uh, an, you know, an upmarket London audience. With the independent, I think the independent is already very much a multi-channel proposition. You know, we're very much a mobile-first business. Uh, video has become a really important part of what we do. I mean, very recently, uh, when the um, the drone—I mean, to be fair, I was sunning myself in Barbados at this time. But uh, I was going to say that's uh, not a London tan. No, is it? it really is. Where I come from, Manchester, that's rust. Yeah, so, no, it's so. going to say actually, people do have these towns in Manchester. And I used to ah. go to university in Salford, ah. but it was very much down to blood pressure this at is, that yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. But uh, but yes, I mean, I think um, I was on holiday and I was able to watch Simon Calder delivering news live on uh, Facebook uh, through the independence um, feed there. So I think, you know, we've really grasped that kind of social um, interaction pretty soon on. So I think for us, again, it's, it's about being mobile first. It's about trying to create as many uh, platforms as possible where we can get logged in information from people. I think that's really key because the more information that we can keep on people, the better service we can basically provide to them. You mentioned London Live. I mean, your own chief exec, Steve Auckland, said you can't keep propping it up not that long ago. Yeah. How long can it be propped up for, or will it collapse? I mean, to be honest, I think, I think there was a slight uh, misquote there. I mean, I think the point was that, you know, we needed to get London Live to a point where it was on course for profitability. I mean, at the time, we always knew that it was going to lose money for the first few years, and it's on track now to actually break even next year. I think, you know, we've... 
it's, it's evolved quite a lot since it started. It, we, we were always having to be fairly agile, I think, with the products. I think TV is, a, is an interesting business. It's very difficult to, to, uh, to exist in from an advertising perspective because of the way those TV um, models work. But I think we've done a brilliant job, actually, of getting the content blend right and getting the audience right. And we've had consistent audience growth. And we've also managed to you know, generate some decent revenues on it. And as I say, at the end of, I think, back end of next year or whenever it is, you know, we are, we are very hopeful that actually we're going to start breaking even on So you're sticking with it? Yeah, it's a great, it's, it's a great product. And as I say, it's another, and it's another element to, of London that we can offer to, to, to customers, whether that be to you know, viewers or whether it be to advertisers. I think it just gives us a much more rounded approach. Tell me about tonight, because you're going to have a bit of fun. We're near the yep. end of what's been a fantastic um, yes. week Europe. Uh, in what are you involved in? So this evening basically is uh, an event called The Big Mistake, so, for, so named by uh, Lord Matt Schechner. Um, we, uh, we went to Matt with a proposal, uh, a very robust proposal, about putting on a uh, end of ad week comedy review show where we basically took the piss out of uh, the industry and ourselves and all the wonderful things that go with it. So we will be down at the Soho Theatre from about 10.30, I think, for an 11 o'clock sharp start. So yes, people will be absolutely shit-faced by the time they arrive. And we will be performing for about 47 minutes, giving a retrospective of sketches, laughter, and career-limiting mirth. We look forward to that, and I'd like to apologise on behalf of myself and Her Majesty who may be viewing <laughs> for the language that's used there. It's industrial language. It's <laughs> the language that we're used to using here in the advertising industry. Get down tonight. There are tickets available, or people can pay on the door. Uh, I think people can just literally turn up on turn the door. Up. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. So. Great way to end the week. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you John. for having me. Cheers. Keep on the conversation. Hashtag AWEurope.